All right, welcome back to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. Mike Catalana, I am Jenna Cottrell. We are here from a very sunny Orchard Park. Before we get started, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you enjoy our content, all right, Bill's training camp, we're, we're in Orchard Park. We're getting closer to the season. A um, couple takeaways today from practice. Stefan Diggs, I also want to talk about too, like the Diggs with Stephen A. Smith oh, saying that he doesn't want to be in Buffalo and that he doesn't feel the same way about being with the Bills. Stephon Diggs has been that guy this whole, in terms of he wants to be here, even yeah. tweeted out the fact that it's 100% not true. But Diggs today, we saw him. He is... So passionate. Let's start with this. Stephen A. Smith is immensely successful. He makes $8 million a year. Crazy. He's all over the place. He runs ESPN. Yeah. He's got all that. He doesn't have a clue about the NFL. Has no idea, has no sources. There's no source for this. Yeah. Diggs came right out and said it. He had said it to us. Plus, even if Diggs wanted to get traded, they can't trade him right now with his contract. Yeah. We all know that. He's never asked for that, but it's Stephen A. So it gets attention is what it is. And that's what he's there for. I have a source who tells me he's not happy. Okay. I mean, Stephen A. has some sources, yeah. just not in the National Football League. So again, I'm not jealous of him. I'm envious of what he's got. The guy's had an awesome career, yeah. but don't pay any attention to this. It means absolutely nothing. And digs the way he was today. He's digs, digs being digs. Yeah. I thought, once again, he is so interesting to me because Diggs, I feel like no matter what practice, I feel like I'm tired walking into practice and I see him just all of the energy, all of the time, meticulous about each and every rep, his footwork, how the energy is with all the other receivers, the entire team, really. I just feel like that's something that's, it's so funny because yeah. when you see the guy who shows up to practice and, and the stuff that you don't see off camera, his dedication level, I feel like, if anything, and we talked about it, is almost like notched up even further. So remember when there was the whole off-season thing and then we were wondering, you know, we would always say like, Diggs yeah. and Allen, Diggs and Allen, because we're so used to seeing them be yeah. guys, boys, together, right? Yeah. That's the way they are. BFFs. And it wasn't, it didn't feel that way for a little bit of time. Correct. It's back. I mean, they're hanging, they're laughing. Yeah. Josh is doing his hair flips now with his flowing locks in the back. Uh, and Diggs is Diggs. 75 hair flips today. Yeah, really. I wish I could do that. Just <laughs> once. <laughs> Just once. Um, but back in the day, parted in the middle, feathered oh back. Oh, my God. So look. It was a look. That is something. But Diggs is Diggs. Now, Diggs is Diggs also means he gets fired up. Mm -hmm. End of practice again today. <sighs> oh, they have so many rules here about what they want yeah. us to say, not want to say. I'll just say this. Diggs is never happy. So this is not reporting on the specific practice. He is never happy when a defender is maybe violating what would be rules in an NFL game yeah. by holding an offensive player. Correct. That's the kind of thing that happens in practice. And when it does, and I'm not saying yeah. it happened today, but Stefan Diggs is not pleased with that defender. Very animated, very much is confronting too small, too too oh, no. strong. He goes right at yeah, him. I was say. He does not hold back, and you can hear him. Yes. He's loud. He I believe he says to them, "Please, Mr. Defender, would you consider not grabbing a hold of my uniform in an illegal way?" He says something to that effect. Yeah, no, just as politely. I and would this imagine. is why I say it's Diggs being Diggs. Please, there's problems on this team. Diggs ain't going anywhere. Diggs is not a problem. Let's talk about the penalties because that was one of the things that we wanted to mention because a lot of concern. There was 12 penalties in that first half uh, on Saturday and that game, and it felt like all the pre-snap pre stuff, which you don't want to see. You don't want to see it in general, but just stuff like that that can be avoidable. The team, obviously McDermott not happy with it, trying to work out on all these things. You know, how does the team, how would you explain where they're at in terms of where they are and where they want to be? Some of it is just life in the preseason and there are days this happens and it was a multitude of players offensive linemen wide receivers tight ends that all made those mistakes i think it's a bad overall look yeah. because look the steelers were playing in the preseason you mentioned it the other day and they didn't do those yeah. things i think you will see a sharper team on the field but it's individual things uh trent Sherfield talked about it afterward he goes look i don't need to speak out of turn i'm new here but yeah. it's about it's about fundamentals it's those things but it's first teamers second teamers third teamers it happened all night 
it was one of those nights. I don't think they're that kind of team. I don't think that's the problem. Sean McDermott is not pleased about it. I know he addressed it. He addressed it in his own way. Yeah. Again, the team doesn't like us talking about things. All I would say to fans is Sean McDermott addressed it in a very Sean McDermott way. Yeah. And it's about get your act together, get themselves ready. It's nothing terrible, but it's, it's a football thing. Be ready. And if not, I'm going to address it, and I think he's addressed it with them. I think he's absolutely addressed it. I think it continues to be something that he's going to harp on. Because you're right, I feel like that, like the, the 12 in the first half was was frankly embarrassing. Like it was yeah. like, I said preposterous because. Ooh. Four syllables. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> By the way, I just want everybody to know, Jenna set up the camera, so she is even okay. more directly into the Oh, light. yeah. No, I'm saying it's harder for you because you're looking back a little bit more, and I'm. I'm just fighting just, through it like you're a just, veteran. You're just basking in your spotlight. Yes, yes, that's what I'm doing. It's honestly a beautiful day here. It is. It's I know some people were complaining about it. They're like, it's too bright. It's too hot. Stop it. Neither of us want to get traded out of Buffalo. Stephen A., do not report yeah, that exactly. at the moment. We are happy here. <laughs> um, all right. Middle linebacker. Yeah. The Bills brought in Deshaun White. They signed a guy. Um, you know, there's been so much talk about Tyrell Dotson playing in that, that fourth quarter of the game on Saturday. Uh where are they at? Because we even talked to Eric Washington today. It's like concern is I can't remember exactly how he phrased it, but he's like, no, we this is something we are we are addressing. Yeah, they have to be ready. And look, that's telling in a game. Tyrell Dodson is a guy who started right and yeah. he looked in camp that way and you got him playing in the fourth quarter. They are going to diff get different people out there. Terrell Bernard's still not practicing. That's an issue. Yeah. I mean, now getting him ramped up to start the season, and I don't mean being the starting player, but to get him ready yeah. is a thing because it's a hamstring. So, And he once again times, did not practice right, today. We can say that. How many times yes. do I have to keep repeating this, that they have a lot of rules? All I will tell you is you can figure it out. It is a fluid situation. They have some veterans on the field, and they're all getting an opportunity, at least some of them, to show what they can do as the starting middle linebacker. How does that sound? Is that generic enough? That's generic enough. And yeah. I think if you you can put together the pieces. But, I mean, that is something that we, we talked about after the game of, like, what, where are the Bills yeah. at? And it's a little bit scary because there is time to address it. And, again, I don't want to – Dan Fates telling everyone, calm down, all these things. I hear that. But He's Aaron Rodgers. He's going to do R-E-L-A-X. -E -E Dan can smell that. Yeah. He can, he can spell it. Maybe. Dan is the, the worst speller? Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible. But, but I will say this. Dan was right about overall don't get too panicked. Yeah, but absolutely. middle linebacker is a problem and offensive line is a problem. It just is. And they were problems coming into camp. They're problems coming into the season. That's the part about the preseason game that bothered me. Yes is the things we expected to be a problem still are. Yeah. And they'll be addressed in some form. That linebacker spot, I'm telling you, I think they're still going to be out there looking for players. Yeah. And it doesn't mean the guys they have in-house can't play. It doesn't mean Bernard won't eventually get snaps. Yeah. And it doesn't mean they don't bring another guy in and get him up to speed. But it is an issue for them right now. It is. If you're looking at me counting, I'm trying to figure out what's the one Number before four, the- what, AJ. Yes. Oh, yeah, AJ some spicy. Epinesa on a play grabbed can Alec we, Anderson. Can we say this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is not, this is, this went on. This was a play. Okay. I mean, this okay, was like okay, a play. Okay. Grabbed him. These are big, big men. Yeah. And he, he threw him. I mean, I'm watching it. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, he caught him. In fairness to Anderson, he caught him as Anderson was yeah. running. It was a play to the, to the stretch on the side. And A.J. is a strong dude, yeah, and he, he threw him. And it could have been based on something that had happened earlier. Players started yelling at each other again. Uh, hair flip 17 was in the middle because he was yelling. He sticks up for his guys. Josh sticks up for his guys. Yeah. But his guy, got, his guy got tossed on that play. So um, A.J. is showing a little of that fire he's going to need. I it mean, I, I was I – was, okay with it like I was like all right like, adds a little bit of drama it adds a little bit of intensity and yeah. like it gets the guys going and talking and show I mean look they were already you know it was tough reps so it's hot out here today like you could already feel that level of intensity but just that like turns it up you know it makes it personal honestly yeah which I think you play harder when it is personal so that was something and you're right AJ Epinesa 
a, what did Sean McDermott say? Pivotal piece. A pivotal piece of the defense. Yeah. So, I mean, he's showing that he's not somebody to be messed with. Yeah. He's also showing it to Alec Anderson. I'm going to add a four and a half because we're going to talk about something non-football here at the end. But four and a half, Dalton Kincaid, we got a chance to talk with him today. We keep waiting for him to not sound like a rookie in terms of like, oh, yeah. or maybe sound not like a veteran. I I don't think the game phased him. I think he was happy to make a catch. I don't think anything seems to phase the guy. I, I, I asked him about get, going from preseason to regular season. His answer was more about like trying to win. That's not what I meant. I meant all the veterans know when that's opening night on the 11th, it's just a different level of yeah. play. It doesn't seem to phase him very much at all. It really doesn't. And I feel like, I don't know, we asked him too. I was like, you know, compared to ramping up for the NFL, getting used to it, like where is it compared to what your expectations were and has there been anything that surprised you? And he was like, yeah, I didn't really know what to expect. So I, I feel like, but I, I think that's authentic. I feel like he's like, I'm just going to put my head down. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to be the guy that I know I can be. And, like, he's really built a rapport with Allen. Now, you're right. Things change when those lights come on, especially on Monday Night Football to open the season for this Bills team against a divisional rival and a future Hall of Famer quarterback and Aaron Rodgers. Like, there are things that just make that attitude and that (laughs) intensity go ramped up. But I I think he's that guy where it's just – it's it's do your job. Like I really think that he is a, a fit in Buffalo because it seems like it's not that he doesn't think the moment is big. I just think he he thinks it it's the next moment. There are guys who come from Alabama, Ohio State, and they Utah. You know, that's what I'm saying is, and they have this confidence because they have played big stages. It's a level up of football, but they're ready for that. But they speak with them. Most of those speak with a little more level of a. Not arrogance, but a, a confidence that is yeah. born in, I have played in the biggest moment Comfortable. in a big stage. He hasn't. He played at Utah. So maybe it's good. Maybe he really doesn't know, and that makes it better for him. I he think is I think it's I think it's simple. I yeah. think he's he views it very simplistically. Like, yeah. this is my job. I'm in the NFL now. It's going to be different, and, like, I'm here to show up. Like, yep. I just – I get that vibe where it's not like – I don't think that he's uh, being disingenuous when he says it. That's the thing. I don't think it's like a no. front where he's like, no, no, no. you know, I, he's just looked really smooth. And it's not fake it till you make it. It is. He just is like, hey, they tell me what to do. I line up. I'm learning the offense and I go out and yeah. do it. So we're going to get to number five and I'm going to say something. And I don't I think I'm accurate when I say this. You were a little bit of a fangirl today. Oh, I was absolutely a fangirl. I a thousand percent. So. The camera crews for the Netflix show Breakpoint, which yeah, I love Net- the show. A Netflix show is here, and it's not quarterback. Exactly. Yes. So they follow around the professional tennis players, and obviously Jessica Pagula, one of those. So we walked into camp today, and I see these camera crew, and I was like, oh, Jessica Pagula's here. I love the show Breakpoint. I don't play tennis. I've always wanted to try it. I'm lanky, so maybe yeah. I'd be good. But um, I just thought it was really cool. She talked to us for like 15 minutes. Yeah. The camera crew was super nice. A lot of them are from Australia. They, they're out of London. They all have accents. They, they don't know anything about the NFL. They don't know anything about the they NFL. They know even less than Stephen A. Smith. How about that? I think that's fair. Um, which we were ch- we were laughing about, like, watching today's practice. You know, they have the, the crowd noise yeah. pumped in. And you're probably they like. You've got to be thinking, this is lunacy. Yeah. The hell is this? <laughs> the hell is this? But, no, it was just really cool. And. We had to, can we say, like, we signed the paperwork? Oh, yeah, we had to sign the paperwork because we are we may be in the video of them of all, while we were interviewing Jessica. So that was cool. It's like a release. So we'll get a lot of money for that, won't we? Oh, yeah, all, yeah. The, all the pennies. No. Yeah. It doesn't come out till January. January. Yeah. And I asked that, and these guys right away are like, oh, yeah, Mike wants to know when he can record the show. I want to watch the show now because I have not. You talk about it all the time. I have not watched it. I've always loved it. I think yeah. it's really good. I think if you love sports, it's really interesting putting yourself in the mind of these players because I guess t- tennis was never a sport that I followed, so you don't really realize. It's similar to golf where there's all these events and only one person can win and yeah. the mental fortitude and also just the physical conditioning. They will have a match and then immediately be on the exercise bike, be doing more plyometric work. Like it's it, – the, the work ethic is crazy. And I will say, some people are like, well, Jessica Pagula, she has unlimited resources. Of course, she's going to be a professional tennis player. It's like, 
you <laughs> resources do take you places. Absolutely. There's no denying right. that. But also it's on the player, their work ethic, their natural ability, their ability in terms of their getting hurt, staying healthy, all these things that, I mean, she's the top ranked American player in both the men's and the women's. Yeah. How about this? Sometimes having all this money means you wouldn't have that Chip. chip and yeah. ability to work that hard and she does it i love talking to her i yeah. thought she's 29 you said she's 29 yeah. years old she's very that's the camera crew right there, <laughs> there they are. they're leaving they're waving they to think us. i'm Netflix. so weird yeah well that's fair well, they were accurate um but i loved her and, and i gotta say it it reminded me of talking to her mom i said this to you the way kim is um yeah she has that maturity and presence yeah. and she's 29 years old and she's number one and she's going to try to go down to New York. She's going this week. And maybe, maybe she wins the U.S. Open on Saturday and then comes to the Bills game for Monday. That's what she was joking about. She said, wouldn't that be great? I think that'd be great for, for her first and her family. Yeah. For the United States, heck, for a U.S. player to win the U.S. Open. Heck. We've had, obviously, yeah. uh, the Williams sisters have been dominant American players. But um, this would be cool. I yeah. love talking to her. Now, yeah. now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch more. Will you? Yeah, well, I might be in the show, so I might be in there for like two and a half seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going to be like one cut away. Yeah, yeah. And I got to carry the camera because Mike can't do it. Yeah. yeah, I knew where to stand. It was. It's just going to be Mike Catalana. <laughs> I bet you that's the case. Oh, it was cool, though. Yeah, it was I, cool. And the rooting interest of just someone being from Western New York and that type of spotlight. Yeah. And then also, too, she was funny. She's like, yeah, I made a lot of of people uh bills fans <laughs> yeah she said i talked to these players from other places in the world and they were like i don't know football i don't have a team she's like you're a bills fan <laughs> i love it uh, it was great it was she was really cool so yeah. it was a, a an eventful day at practice yep. i would say um really cool and just funny to see like cameras at practice we see so many that are just focused on everything on the field yep. Very interesting to see it off of the field on the sidelines, kind of looking towards yep. Jesse Pagula. So uh, that was our report from practice for Mike Catalana. I am Jenna Cottrell. Please be sure to like. What's your opinion on the Stefan Diggs, Stephen yeah. A situation? We want to hear from you. And then uh, please be sure to subscribe. And if you enjoy our content, please send it to someone you know that yeah. you think would enjoy it as well. We're trying to uh, grow this thing. So it's been a lot of fun and we, uh, we really enjoy what we do. I can't believe today is so cool. I know. I just thought it was so cool. Fangirl. Um, fangirl. And, um, all right. Yeah, we'll catch you next time here on Buffalo Plus. It's, it is very bright, so apologies. Okay. <laughs>